Okay, so I'm going to try my first video with some talking with my lovely voice. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started with this painting and give her a background. I've changed my technique a little bit. I used to be really, really picky about my location and not getting into my fairy and all that stuff. Um, but now, after teaching a few um, beginner watercolor classes and all of those things, uh, I wanted to get a little bit more playful. Um, so I do a lot of wet on wet at the beginning and um, kind of allowing a bit of the paint to get into the fairy, which I can always cover up a little bit later or it adds to the texture of the piece and um, overall. Um, so it's going to have a mix of wet on wet, some splattering with a um, toothbrush. I'll find my toothbrush here. Uh, so I use a toothbrush and just kind of give it a little splat. Um, I'll use rubbing alcohol, some salt. I have my little salt guy here that I like to use. Um, and then my favorite brushes to use to start, I stick with squares at the beginning. Um, I used to hate squares and now I find them pretty useful and helpful with wet on wet um, in this process. And then I'll move on to my rounds in the more detail stages and we're getting a little bit more specific. So here we go, we get started. Start with water, get it all wet with a spray bottle, just enough to get paint moving around. I'm gonna get my palette all wet, my palette's to my right. I'm right-handed, so all my paint, my water, my paper towel, everything's usually to my right um, to help me keep everything together. And I'm going to start with uh, some yellows. I like starting with yellow because it uh, I can manipulate it. Remember, this is underpainting, and so you would want a color that you can change um, enough. And I'm going to have a lot of greens back here. In the original piece, it's a lot of blues. Um, I might still bring blues in, uh, but they're going to probably be more of a green blue. Same thing with the flowers. Um, the yellow I can pretty well change out. I don't fear it, I guess is a better way of putting it. And get in there. I'm going to go ahead and grab that blue for the sky. And I use some gold, um, Pincidone gold in there. I'm going to grab some French ultramarine for the sky. I don't want a whole lot at the beginning. I'll go back in and darken it up if I feel I need to. With blue skies, I get a little bit more concerned about um, how much is in there. And if it's too dark, it doesn't feel airy. So I want to make sure it feels airy. Get a little bit more water in there. And then I'm just going to drop some water drops. Get closer into the skin and the face so that it blends in. Bring some of that yellow up. And then I'm going to grab that same blue. My square, and I'm just going to drop in some color here and there. My morning glories are blue, so I'm going to put my in a little bit of blue there. I'm going to dry my brush up, and if I find paint that I in places that I really don't like, I'm going to soak it up. It doesn't mean it's not going to go into that area per se, it just won't be as intense and I don't want the intensity so I'm pretty uh, picky about my skin and my face, face especially, so if I find that it's getting too dull or um, too invasive I'll pull it out. I'm going to move to the smaller square and I'm actually going to grab some green. I'm going to grab... Um, some sap green because it's light and it's got quite a bit of yellow in it so it stays in the same kind of spectrum color spectrum and I'm gonna just add a few swigs here and there I'm gonna 
these areas here for you. And actually, I think I'm gonna grab my paint, my uh, toothbrush. Dip that in my paint. And I'm not gonna be afraid to just splatter it around. No fear. Don't be afraid of your paint, right? The number one thing of teaching, don't be afraid. I'm gonna put some salt in here to give it some texture. It's like cooking. It's all right if the texture gets out into the sky. That doesn't, happy little trees. No, that doesn't bother me. It just adds to the piece overall. It's not just for texture of the plants or texture of, you know, grass or anything like that. It's just overall texture. I'm even going to spray some of the rubbing alcohol. And those of you that have painted with watercolor and using rubbing alcohol, you're probably like squeamish at the moment with this idea. Um, but I've used it several times and it hasn't really failed me yet. So I put a little bit on here and I tapped it in the bottle and I'm going to stay probably about four or five inches above and I'm just going to very lightly splatter. And I know it's really hard to see on the video um, because you have all this water here which is going to take away. Um, but it does add a little bit of resist texture which might show up later which might not show up. Um, for me, rubbing alcohol is kind of a gamble. Um, you just don't know what you're going to get unless you have the science down perfectly. And there are many artists that do. Um, I highly suggest looking that up if you can. Um, but I'm not one of them. So I just put it down and hope for the best. And if I don't like it, I just learn to work with it. I kind of like the spontaneity of that. So there's my first wash glaze. And from here, I would... Um, either get into the body and um, or I won't and not this time I will um, but I would get into the body or I would just let it dry and I think that's what I'm gonna let it do is just let it dry from here on out 